Hey everybody, it's Norm again from Tested and we have one more favorite things video for you this year. It is of course my traditional annual favorite coffee table books of the year. I got seven books for you this year that I picked up that I am just in love with. So we're gonna start off with some Star Trek. Of course, we're gonna start off with some Star Trek. Last year, 2021 was the 25th anniversary of First Contact. I know we're getting into Picard season three coming up, the cast from Next Generation's coming back. We hear it's gonna be even continue some of the stories of DS9 and Voyager. Very excited for that. But looking back at 1996's First Contact, Jonathan Frakes' directorial debut, this is an amazing behind the scenes book. You know, every time uh, new movies come out, there's gonna be some behind the scenes book, an art book, I have plenty of those. But when you give enough time between the movie's release, 10, 20 years, 25, 26 years in this case, uh, it gives some of the filmmakers more room to tell some more in-depth behind the scenes stories, especially when we talk about films made in the 90s where not everything was necessarily chronicled. This book goes deep into the making of in my opinion, the best next generation film from the design of John Eve's design of the Enterprise E and all the work that had to be done from their decision to go with the sleeker design with the struts going backward. They did attempt the struts going forward design, this turkey leg design, no good. Happy what they did to the 10 foot long ILM model that John Goodson and the team, the ILM model shop eventually made to Michael Westmore's team and his son, Michael Westmore Jr.'s team, uh, working on the new Borg designs. Love, love, love the Borg costumes, the prosthetics, the, the fiber optic lights uh, that were put into the Borg. Incredible uh, nemesis, as well as design, of course, the Borg Queen, portrayed by Alice Krieg, and that it's uh, still a groundbreaking special effect of the first appearance of the Borg Queen coming down, uh, just her upper torso landing onto her body. All of those from the exterior of the ship, the spacesuit, the incredible fight on the deflector dish, all these stories are told in this wonderful coffee table book. Uh, I was a subscriber to the Star Trek Communicator magazine back in the 90s. I got glimpses of the making of First Contact when they were making this, uh, but this is all of those stories and more photos I've never seen before in a wonderful book. Now, sticking with Star Trek, this is actually a book that came out in 2020. I'm surprised I didn't hear about it and didn't pick it up until this year, but this may be my favorite behind the scenes Star Trek book. It's the artistry of Dan Curry, who is one of the uh, visual effects artists and designers on the show, worked on Next Generation, uh, DS9, Voyager, and Enterprise. And we've seen a lot of art books where it covers maybe the, uh, the journey of one artist, one effects artist, one makeup artist, one illustrator. I have some of those as well. Uh, this is that, but there's so much of Dan Curry's journey that ties into visual effects that is not just his work, but the art of compositing when they were shooting on video. So this book is broken down into shots, selected shots from the series they worked on. So for example, when they had the filming miniature for the Enterprise D, they dive into what it took. Um, ben Robinson, who co-wrote this book, uh, dives into what it took to create those flyby shots. You know, they had budgeted in 40 effect shots that they were gonna have for motion control, which they would be able to composite different star fields, different planets in the background. But then they realized with this detailed ship, with a type of show they were gonna make, they would need much more than that. So you got storyboards, you got all the different angles, incredible screenshots, and just a look into what that technology was back then, whether it was matte painting, whether it was video compositing, uh, whether it was uh, the transporter effect that we saw in the, one of my favorite reading uh, Rainbow episodes, they actually go frame by frame into what it would be like to use those technologies back then, uh, told from the perspective of over 30 years later now. Uh, and they use the case studies here are some of the best episodes of Next Generation. You know, the Borg Cube that appeared um, in uh, Best of Both Worlds, part one and two, slicing the piece of the Enterprise. Oh, the model of the Voyager. Uh, Dan Curry also designed the opening sequences to those shows. So you actually see the breakdown of 
for example, uh, the Voyager opening sequence. And you, you also have uh, <laughs> his enthusiasm for the science fiction martial arts of uh, fighting with the Batleth. So uh, fans of Star Trek and, and Dan Curry will know his appearances at conventions where he does talk about how he has embraced uh, martial arts. And so you have his study of the Klingon fighting style using a Batleth and it's just, it's all for fun. Love the way this, uh, this book is broken down. Love these, just these wonderful breakdowns of how these shots were done for Star Trek. Uh, and this could be, I mean, this could be used in a in a, a, a special effects a class, right, as a book to study. But the fact that the case studies are the, the shows that I love growing up, the Star Trek shows I love, and those shots from television uh, makes this very special. The artistry of Dan Curry, very, very highly recommended. Now, speaking of artists and uh, their bodies of work, Ron Cobb, of course, incredible illustrator and artist, who sadly passed away a couple years ago, uh, but was just just so influential in his uh, in, in in the films that we love from the '80s and '90s and, and '70s. You know, from Aliens and the design of the Nostromo to the interior of those ships. You know, working with Ridley Scott to create the, this just beautiful, first of all, beautiful concept illustrations of what these ships look like, so that. The production design team could then take this, work with the model makers and the set decorators to then turn this into the director's vision. Ron Cobb did that for Aliens, did that for, he was the production designer on Conan the Barbarian. Uh, with all this incredible detail, the castles, again, his illustrations, then turned to model miniatures. Uh, he had a cameo in the film as well, to uh, Night Skies, and of course, Back to the Future. He was the original designer, the first designer of the DeLorean time machine and his version, as you can see on the cover, only one exhaust, then passed on to the other illustrators and designers on Robert Zemeckis' team to have the final DeLorean model that we know and love today. But you look at Ron Cobb's illustrations, how detailed they were, the interiors, this DNA, this world building he did still is in the final product. And that's a testament to how influential of a designer and collaborator he was for those films. Again, he unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, so this is a great tribute to his work uh, from his estate and a lot of great tributes from the directors he worked with as well in, uh, in terms of his legacy, the art of Ron Cobb. Switching gears a little bit to some more contemporary art. We have the art of DuckTales. This is the most recent three season run of the DuckTales reboot that was on the Disney Channel, Disney XD. Now on Disney Plus, you can watch all of it. Very short lived, unfortunately. And this art book was written by friend of Tested, Ken Plume. Ken Plume, massive Disney fan, massive DuckTales fan, friends with many of the people who worked on the show, from the voice actors, the producers, and showrunners. Uh, what I love about this book, first of all, if you haven't seen the DuckTales reboot, it is one of the great modern animated series uh, for young children and adults. It, it's not like Bluey in that it's about life stories, but it's an adventure tale. It's a serialized adventure story telling of the story of the family, this family, Scrooge McDuck's family, you know, Huey, Dewey, Louie, Webby, Donald's in here, all the great characters from the original 90s DuckTales cartoon make an appearance. And the way this book is broken down is it's kind of an episode guide. And so you have, yes, the creation of the style, of this new aesthetic style, of the new characters, uh, and how they filmed it. A lot of great behind the scenes stuff. But what I like is that the majority of the book is uh, one photo, one page spread per episode over the three seasons. And the show was running until 2021. And it's a show that I watch with my son. He was just at the right age where he was really enjoying it. And this is a behind the scenes book that I can actually flip through with him. So I can actually, we can watch an episode, we can bring out the book, we can flip it open, and we can look at some of the artwork and I can start introducing him with some of the ideas of not just you know, remember the story from that episode, remember the great scenes, but also how the episode was made and reading some of the oral history, some of the anecdotes from the storytellers, from the filmmakers. Uh, I'm getting to try to infuse that appreciation of the animation process, of the production process, 
to my kids as well. Start them early. So not only the show great for adults and kids, I think the book is as well. Well done, Ken Plume. Something a little bit more for the adult audience uh, is Tom Sachs' uh, art show art in general and this newest uh, compilation of his latest exhibit as well as pieces from uh, his past 10 years, 20 years of work really, Tom Sachs' Spaceship. So uh, Tom Sachs' friend of Adam, he's been on the channel with uh, an interview we did years ago. We've covered his work. We've actually done a podcast from his LEM, his lunar uh, his module, um, the, the, the replica he had that was in San Francisco uh, many years ago, uh, but he recently had an exhibit in New York of uh, some of his most recent work, some of his most recent spaceship works, and this is the exhibition catalog to go with, along with that exhibit. So not only do you have uh, great photos, uh, a few few essays, introductions, but photos of the uh, couple dozen uh, pieces from that exhibit like this generation ship, which is made from, as you can see, Makita battery chargers, as well as, uh, what is this? This is a mop bucket. Love that, very uh, much Tom Sachs work, um, and detail images and photos of that, but also great photos of some of his more iconic pieces. So his recreations of, for example, a TIE fighter using a Spalding basketball as the center cockpit here. Incredible detailed photos of that. A big fan of this Ares tribute, uh, his take on that from 2001 Space Odyssey, the sand crawler that he did. Um, and so you have stuff from his space program, you have uh, the lunar module, much more than just what was shown uh, this past couple months in New York, and so I haven't had uh, one of Tom Sachs' um, uh, art books before, or his exhibition catalogs before, and this actually was sold in person in New York and will be made available on June t or J January 10th, I believe, uh, and they're only publishing about 3,000 of copies of this book. It's being sold online, so if you order now, they will ship this out on January 10th for you. Uh, Adam very graciously was able to get me a copy uh, from Tom's team and actually have uh, a, a nice inscription here as well. It says, Norm, always be Nolan. So thanks to Adam for being able to get me this book from Tom. Last two books I have are in the world of special effects and makeup effects. This is a great book from Howard Berger, one of the founders of Canby Effects Group. So along with Greg Nicotero, they do all the makeup effects for The Walking Dead shows, uh, The Orville, multiple Academy Award winner. They did uh, the uh, Chronicles of Narnia uh, makeup effects. Uh, but over the lockdown and the pandemic, uh, Howard Berger and his collaborator here, Marshall Julius, a, a uh, writer and reporter, uh, decided maybe it was time to create their own coffee table book that is less a comprehensive history and technical history of monster makeup effects uh, over the past century, but feels more like an extended version of a Fangoria or a Cinema Fantastique uh, or Starlog uh, feature in book form. So remotely done over Zoom interviews, phone calls. They got dozens of their collaborators, other makeup masters uh, in Hollywood to contribute and tell stories of the films they worked on and, and, and the films that inspired them. So not only do you have your classic Universal movie monsters, your Lon Chaney's, and of course your Dick Smith's, uh, and even more recently the work of you know artists like Rick Baker. Uh, you have tribute to them how these movies and these creatures influence the current masters of, of makeup, uh, and then the, the works that they worked on. So it's really like a free-flowing oral history. Kind of feels like the book equivalent of going to Monster Palooza and hanging out, listening to old friends chat with each other or sitting in on a panel where you're gonna have Tom Savini and 
and and and Matt Winston and Howard Berger just talk about movies. Uh, this is the book equivalent of that. You're going to have photos from their personal collections of when they worked in those films, a few case studies here and there, you know, advice for uh, new makeup artists, and not just about how to sculpt a memorable creature or design a memorable animatronic, but how to work on film production and what it's like when you're taking the makeup that you spent months and months on and putting it on film and, and working under the constraints of production. Uh, everything from full body movie monsters, you know, performers in stunt performers in suits to old age makeup, uh, to robots, uh, all sorts of zombies, of course. Uh, a wonderful love letter to the industry today to show just how relevant uh, monster makeup still is, even though we have a combination of practical and digital effects, uh, which they do pay tribute to as well. Masters of makeup effects. And I would be remiss not to include, yes, for th appearing a third time on this channel, a fourth time now, Adam did a review, it popped up his favorite things, Sean's favorite things, and here, Mad Dreams and Monsters, the Phil Tippett uh, art book, We've said plenty about what Phil, not only what Phil means to fans of science fiction and film, uh, but what Phil means to to test it. He, you know, he's become a friend of the channel, uh, the the artist uh, at Tippett Studio. Sean works there now and has contributed to many of their projects. And the one thing I want to shout out, because I don't want to go through all the films that we've talked about before, is how it ties into a little bit of tested history. Back in, you know, oh gosh, was it 2015 uh, when they were working on The Force uh, Awakens, episode seven, and they brought Phil and his team in to do the Dejeric uh, chess set, uh, stop motion animation, that Easter egg. Uh, this book chronicles kind of a day by day of what it took to design the animation uh, for that to go back and to recreate the stop motion puppets uh, for Phil and his close friend Dennis Mirren to discuss, you know, to discuss the lighting for uh, Tom uh, uh, Gibby and Chuck, uh, Gibby and Chuck to do to to work with Phil to do the animation. And it's even mentioned here the day that Adam and us, the tested team, stopped by to shoot our behind the scenes videos. We are chronicled as part of that journey revisiting the Dejeric chess set. And so it's to have that little moment of intersection between uh, us as uh, storytellers and what we like to do, what we hope to do in telling the stories of these great effects artists and Phil and his team revisiting that chess set or, and using what they do best in stop motion animation and creature design. Uh, that makes this book um, really special for me. So that's it. Those are my favorite coffee table books of the year. We'll have plenty more videos to fill out the rest of the year. Things we've shot uh, when our recent trip to uh, London, visiting our friends at Prop Store and uh, FBFX. Stay tuned for those videos coming up soon and uh, many more, hopefully more trips to come and visiting some of the effects shops that we used to do a lot of. But again, thank you so much for watching our videos. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. Uh, and we'll see you in 2023. Bye.